right, how's everybody doing on this Blue Monday? Hopefully everybody's taking care and, you know, made it through the Super Bowl and everything. <laughs> For all of my USA peoples there. Well, today I want to take a little bit of time. I've been asked a lot, you know, during the um, course of me making these videos um, about a good friend of mine and one of my heroes, Mr. Chris Kane. So I just wanted to do a little brief video. You know, I'm not that great in mimicking people. I've kind of, you know, just worked to try and refine my own thing, you know, but I just want to talk about some of the things that I picked up from Chris Kane. And one of the big things about Chris Kane is his execution. His execution and his flawless playing is just flawless. It just flows. It's very flowing and everything is just so effortless. So it seems to me, and it has for over 20 years of seeing him play, you know, live, you know, just see how he can execute his ideas so wonderfully, you know, and then there's little things that he would do. He would do his own spin on like, you know, greats like Albert King and B.B. King and all of the great blues musicians, as well as, you know, have like the West Coast sort of Robin Ford-ish style stuff, early Robin Ford and Larry Carlton type things and jazz and bebop phrasing from people, different musicians like Joe Paz, I'm sure, or Pat M Martino and just that whole jazz guitar language too, you know, as well as not just one thing, it's just he's just put all of these different influences in one thing put it in a funnel and put it in a jar, you know, and it just all comes out Chris Kane. And he's a fantastic singer as well as a guitar player, accompanist, songwriter, and all of those things. And I would just like to say too, you know, definitely pick up, you know, all of Chris Kane's record. Chris Kane has a new record coming out this year and you definitely want to pick that up on Alligator Records as well as this record, Late Night City Blues. This record is um, his first record. And then I would just get all of them because they're like, you know, getting any of your heroes records. They all mean so much to me. Each one of them represents a different time of hearing it, buying it in the store and all of that kind of thing. So it's really, you know, a wealth of cool songs, cool songwriting and playing and singing and everything and the band is impeccable on all the records and he does you know original songs and jazz influenced blues and just all different kinds of things you know and it's wonderful so i just wanted to talk about a couple things you know like uh, i've been asked the question a lot about you know like some little things that he does uh there's this little double stop thing. And this is only a small little thing that I picked up. Just a small little thing. If you're in B flat. Then for the four chord, still in B flat. You know, just like that. You know, that, that kind of thing. And I even kind of took a little bit of that and, you know, just tried to do something a little different with it. Like, you know, just as a really basic little thing, just double stops once again double stops and I talked about um, a lesson or two ago I talked about doing double stops in sort of a major soul kind of way so this is something you can do over like a dominant chord you know like dominant seven or a nine or a thirteen
you know, something like that, you know, and it's really a lot of fun to, you know, just do these little double stops. Sometimes, you know, somebody will be playing and Chris will just like play that behind them and it's out of the way, it's tight, it's cool and it sounds cool and it fits really good, you know. So that's one of the things that I definitely picked up from Chris, you know, many, many, many years ago. <laughs> and another thing is this, uh, just kind of taking his own spin on a lot of these like BB King, Albert King ish type things. He's really turned them into his own thing, but you know, just, and you know, I play this kind of thing too. And I definitely got it from Chris, you know. <laughs> You know, because before when I was young, you know, I was like 18, 19 when I first saw Chris play, you know, and I would always play these licks like, you know, something like, you know, something like that. But I noticed that it had a warmer, fatter tone when he would play it and sound You know, just had a throatier, thicker, you know, tone. So those are two things that I picked up from him. And then there was this other thing that I would see him do that I couldn't figure out when I was young. You know, this like thing that I turned kind of into my own like thing. But I saw him play a lick like... um You know, he done another lick that I probably still can't play, you know, two to this day and like, still can't do it, but he can do it flawless and super fast, <laughs> but still be super musical and cool. So I just wanted to take a little time and talk about my friend, my dear friend and talk about, you know, he's got a new record coming out, Chris Kane. And it's on Alligator Records. I, the title of it eludes me right now, but definitely check it out when it comes out. I think it comes out maybe in May or something like that. I'm not sure. Don't quote me on that. But, you know, just wanted to do this video. I've been asked about it a lot, and I thought I would do it today. Got the trusty 335 out in Chris Kane's honor. <laughs> And that's it. Signing off. Happy Monday. Happy Blue Monday, everybody. Blues Monday. <laughs> All right. Take care.